Hello, it's Saturday the 29th of August 2010 and this is Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. Let's go ahead and take a look at these markets, see how they finished up the week. Uh, the S&P 500 yesterday was up 1.5%. You can see, still see it's, uh, it didn't do anything to change the bearish look to this daily time frame. Um, when we look at these lower highs and uh, lower lows, we saw that the, uh, the uh, 107 level continues to be the area of resistance, the prior support from the week before. And that's also where we see that decline. 10-day moving average. So the market's going to need to get back up through that 107 level uh, before we can really uh, have, I don't even, I wouldn't even think we, we would have much confidence in a rally, but uh, it did improve slightly here. We broke a short-term trend line and that five-day moving average. So two, Friday was actually an interesting day because we had the GDP numbers, the market gapped higher, and then immediately sold off. So if you look at where the market was in relation to the volume-weighted average price, it immediately found resistance resistance at that volume weighted average price as the volume weighted average price also declined. Here was a little bit panicky uh, sell off and then the market recovered and held nicely right above that volume weighted average price. This is one of my favorite ways to trade the S&P 500 uh, first hour or so in the morning is when it reverses uh, through the VWAP after a, uh, especially after an emotional move. You see that, let's just back this up a little bit. Um, you can see what happened in here and none of those lines are out of place but what happened is it, it reclaimed the VWAP it kind of consolidated there a little, little bit uh, and then really exploded higher so from that area that was probably the best trade of the day followed by this right here but it was a steady grind higher right up to that 107 level so the 107 level was the area we were looking for uh, if the market was going to rally that we would expect to find uh, resistance up there we've got this trend line from uh, from this month basically that uh, we're getting up towards as well that's right around that 107 10 or so area but back to the daily time frame it's still an ugly picture there's nothing bullish about it best case you could say is that we've come down to the to the low end of this range that's uh, encompassed basically 90 percent of the trading over the, since mid-may that is uh, if you take out these few days right in here but uh, we got to bounce off the low end now we're gonna have to really hold above that 107 and I'd say 107.20 um, if we hold above 107.20 in particular on a closing basis early next week then perhaps we're gonna go a little bit more sideways then maybe we start to look at that weekly time frame and say hey, hey maybe this is an inverted head and shoulders pattern and this would be the basis of a higher low on the weekly time frame right now though the weekly time frame still telling us that this market's a mess it's neutral at best uh, but really when you look at the direction of the highs and lows uh, it's been lower highs and lower lows what will confirm that obviously is another lower low through here which would then I think put this market down to the mid 90s but it's just still too early to tell which way this market's going to go uh, until we break decisively if we break down decisively next week through 104 and a half and then uh uh, take out these July lows, then I think we'll be looking at a uh, much bigger picture. So early next week, I think on a closing basis, 107 is going to be an important area. Let's just call it 107.20. And then down below 105, 104.5 would be uh, uh, further issues for the S&P 500. So we, we still have to remain in a very defensive uh, mode for this for this market overall. Uh, and why are my charts linked up? Let's take a look at the uh, Qs next. The, uh, the NASDAQ 100 was up 1.22%. Kind of similar type of pattern in here is that it's it's been in this range for the last three months. Uh, it only spent a few days outside of that range. Now we've gotten down, we're below these declining moving averages, and we're, we're at a prior level of support that, that just broke uh, last Tuesday, and that support really at about 44.50, you could call it. We're going to need to say, see the market get above 44.50 for a more intermediate term uh, neutrality, basically, um, to, to really kind of break this down, downward trend that it's been in. And we're seeing signs that maybe it's getting a little bit more neutral. But then you look in here, there's there's nothing really bullish about it. All you know, we have uh, we have this prior support acting as resistance. If we can trade and close back above 44.50, maybe we can get uh, a little bit more of a bounce. But uh, it's within a bigger trend lower. Uh, the next move would probably take us up towards. Uh, well, these two levels actually. Uh, this has been important at about 45.30. Uh, we had some support in there. We 
became resistance and resistance again, and then 45.90. Uh, uh, so the the Nasdaq is again in a similar position. It's it's pretty ugly looking. You look at this um, as you know stage one accumulation, stage two markup, and here when we have these moving averages crossing back and forth, it's it's equal to distribution is the way you want to look at it. But just because we would call it stage three distribution doesn't mean that it can't somehow turn around and muster the energy to move higher. What would confirm this is a stage three? So it's just more neutral sideways action. We didn't know what this sideways action was going to be until we started seeing the market make these uh, little higher highs over here. So we were at a potential turning point on the much, uh, you know, on the bigger time frame in these markets. We could be setting up, you know, it's a similar type of decline to that. Um, you know they're all going to occur differently than the last time but this is sideways action that someone's going to take control either the buyers or sellers and right now on the weekly time frames we we you know we have to kind of look at it suspiciously though because we have those lower highs coming in and this market's really been, been unable to do anything really all year if you look at the percentage movements for the year um, we really haven't done much in these markets for a while, but uh, keep an eye on those uh, levels, in particular 44.50, and uh, really down at about 43 bucks a share in the uh, uh, queues as far as important support. The Russell 2000 did come down and test its July lows. Um, you can see it's 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 touched there twice. That's not the definition of a double bottom, by the way. Um, you don't want to get in the habit of calling that a double bottom. Um, but looking at the weekly time frame, we still have this uh, disturbing picture of the lower highs and now we could call this just a level of support. But what's happening is, you know, the more time support is tested, the more likely it is to fail. This could be setting up what's called a descending triangle where the sellers get more aggressive. They're not waiting for a bounce. Uh, to let's say 75 instead they it comes down test support finds our uh, resistance it's it uh, 68 it comes down test again the sellers show up at 65 so they're getting more aggressive price wise this is what could be setting up so this is something to be aware of right now it's uh, you know these moving averages are starting to all kind of turn lower and that's suggesting that the bigger money is really um, moving out of this market now on the encouraging side in, in the Russell we did get above and hold above this 60 and a half area that had been a pretty important uh, breakdown level um, for this market uh, on Tuesday basically it was able to recapture that and kind of get back into this more neutral range so the Russell 2000 to me is is a little bit healthier intermediate term than some of the other markets and you know, look at this broken down trend line where it really took off from more above that five day moving average which is flattened out so we want to see that in the Russell that about sixty dollars and fifty cents we want to see that hold as support going forward if it can hold sixty dollars and fifty cents then perhaps this is going to build out to be a little bit uh, more of a, of a rally here and uh, that that should be able to hopefully help the rest of the market but with all these moving averages declining you can't have confidence in a rally that emerges under these conditions um, they're generally going to fail so um, you know e even even for the uh, shorter term traders that is you know swing traders you can't have a lot of confidence in trading the long side um, in the indexes uh, you know obviously there's going to be some stocks that, that buck the overall uh, neutral slash weakness uh, in the market but the um, the, the, the indexes I, I still don't think you can trust them very much semiconductors kind of interesting here because they did uh, as, as we as we saw we had seen the on Tuesday the market broke down below the range that uh, that it's been in and it kind of just hung around in there but on uh, Friday we had that uh, much uh, you know that quick sell-off in the morning uh, on real big volume and then it recovered so kind of similar to the S&P but here's where it got back above that volume weighted average price and it, it appears to me as though maybe with this heavier volume that we're gonna we've kind of trapped the shorts down in here so the semiconductors um, not necessarily that we're gonna see a big uh, squeeze higher but but from those failed breakdowns often do come fast movement in the opposite direction for fa fa failed 
uh, breakdowns come fast rallies. So it's something to be aware of. I, I don't think it's, you know, you look at it, there's nothing bullish about this except maybe that volume created a washout. You got to think who was left to sell down there and who would have sold short down there after this market has already declined as much as it has, uh, you know, 10% or so over the last uh, month. This, uh, this weekly time frame, we came down and, and basically tested the low end of uh, of the range that it's been in for the last uh, year and a half basically so these semiconductors near term uh, they're still they're still in a horrible downtrend but near term we could uh, set up a bounce and I think what's going to be a key level in there is about twenty five dollars and sixty cents that had been some support we gapped down through it found resistance twice so maybe we can get up to that level it pulls back, holds above that five-day moving average, and then breaks out beyond that $25.60. Then we could get maybe a little bit more of a short squeeze rally, but it, it would be just a short squeeze rally. I don't, it wouldn't be a, a, a reversal of, of all this weakness. It would be something that maybe we get a bounce up towards 26, 26 and a quarter. Um, it's, you see how it's been holding below and finding resistance at that 10-day moving average. Well, a lot of times after the 10-day moving average fails to hold as resistance, then the market will rally up towards the uh, the 20 day moving average so keep an eye on that next week if we begin to rally that that's likely to be an area that will encounter some supply if the market uh, does rally financials were up two percent on friday they uh, you know as we said uh, we observed this on uh, wednesday i believe they had broken down made that new little low in here and we're kind of acting like maybe they wanted to bounce a little bit on on thursday into friday um, obviously it's a choppy environment in here for these uh, stocks and we're, they're starting to make some progress this 13 uh, 75 is actually a pretty important level uh, over the last week as it was support that broke on a gap that then became resistance and we got right back up to it again so maybe a little pullback test the five-day moving average and then we can continue higher uh, these are these are counter trend trades though because obviously we're still in a downtrend on you know look at any time frame pretty much we're at a level that maybe we're gonna find some support in here and um, uh, be able to to bounce a little bit, but it's hard to have confidence in a bounce when we're when we have all these moving averages declining. It just says there's a lot of you know the big money is is moving out basically. But we can get you know some of the sharpest rallies uh, do occur in in downtrending environments. So uh, you want to have strategies for looking at the shorter term time frames, but just be extra careful and and uh, not you know not trust the rallies don't think uh, in other words when you start to see some some profits develop is as good as it may look short term you want to feed a little bit into that so you're not the person left holding the bag when these rallies generally do fail to hold so if we break these lows next week below the 1330 level then uh, it could be that we're heading down towards uh, you know 1290 or so um, anyways, that'll do it for uh, for the wrap up. I uh, hope everyone had a great week of trading, and I will be on StockTwits uh, TV next Wednesday and Friday. So I'll talk to you then.